Well, good morning, good morning. Today we celebrate the day Jesus rose from the grave. Amen. Amen. Easter Sunday. Well, biblically and historically, we know there was a crucifixion. Biblically and historically, we know there was a crucifixion. Also, biblically and historically, we know there was an empty tomb. These are two things that are not up for debate this morning. There was a crucifixion of a man by the name of Jesus of Nazareth, and there was an empty tomb. Today, all over the world, Luke 24, 6 will be recited, he is not here, he has risen. But today, I have not come to solidify that statement. I, I have not come to, to make that statement real in your life because only faith can do that. I just want to ask a question today and hopefully go on a journey today, and that is, what was Jesus doing if he did rise again? What was he doing moments after the resurrection, moments after the resurrection. We're going to be in Luke today, 24, verses 13 through 21. If you're ready, say amen. amen. This is now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they did not recognize him. He asked them, what are you discussing together as you walk along? They stood still and their faces downcast. One of them named Cleopas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened here in these last days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. Verse 21. But we had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. I want to focus in on those words as we move forward today in this place. We had hoped. Let's pray. Father, I pray today that your word would speak to our hearts and our minds today. I pray, Lord God, that truth would come forth today. God, that we would be transformed. We would become more like you. We would know who you are, but also we would learn more of who we are in you, Jesus. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Well, you know, for someone just stepping out of the grave, we find Jesus in a really interesting place. You know, sometimes I like to think about the scripture like being there, and there are times I, I ask myself the question, I mean, what would I have done? What, what would I have done if I just stepped out of the tomb? I'm just letting you know that I'm, I'm tracking the Pharisees down. I'm tracking those down who who had crucified me and put me in the tomb, been like, what's up? I'm back. I, I would have found a big crowd and just been like, what's going on? Look at my hands. <laughs> you know, like I would have been let, letting them know you done messed up and you done fulfilled all the prophecy about me. Thank you very much. There's a reason why God did not choose me. But... I find it interesting that, that Jesus was walking on this road, really this road going to nowhere, you could say nowhere, seemingly talking to a couple of no ones. I mean, not anything significant about anybody or anything in this story. They, they know a little bit about Emmaus, but it is not a, you know, a significant place. It didn't have a lot going on. And he shows up, not, to, not, not in this case to, to John or, or to Peter or, or, or to, to Mary. He does that. But in this case, he shows up 
to two individuals walking away from Jerusalem. Sometimes when people ask me where I'm from, if I, if I meet people in other places, they say, well, where are you from? And have you ever tried to explain where you're from? You guys know all what I'm talking about, like southeastern Ohio and this part of West Virginia. It's like, I, I typically say something like this, I'm from nowhere, West Virginia. And, 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 and I mean that in the, in the best sense because I love West Virginia. I love where I'm from. I love southeastern Ohio. I have to say that because 60% of you are from Ohio. So I... I we gotta acknowledge you. Yeah, yeah, you're in the house. It's always you guys. It's always, it's always you guys. But sometimes I say that. You know, it's cool because Jesus seemed to have a thing for insignificant places and insignificant people. It, it's like he was, he was attracted to it. And there's a statement that, that stands out to me in the midst of all the rest as I was preparing and reading this text for today. These three words stuck out to me. The words, we had hoped. We had hoped that he would. We had hoped that he was. We had hoped something different. Notice past tense past tense. Maybe in the room today, you're here, and maybe you had hoped something. We've all hoped something, right? We've all hoped something and not received what we hoped for. Amen? There are times in our life when we hope something, but yet that hope becomes a past tense. But this is a pretty big deal because they, they, they bank their whole life on this thing. They bank their whole life on this man they call Jesus of Nazareth. Some called him the Christ. But now these individuals, they were walking away from Jerusalem. Understand Jerusalem being the place, the city of faith, being the place, the city of fulfillment, the place of, and the city of hope. For the Jews, it, it really was the place where all of these things would always come together. But they're not in Jerusalem. They're walking seven miles or so away from Jerusalem, indicating they were walking away from their hope. They were walking away from the place that they went to to hopefully see all of these things come to pass, all of these promises come true. But now they find themselves walking away from the very thing they hoped for. They walked away from the hopeful thing, and they were downcast. The Bible says they were downcast. Have you ever been just talking to a friend about something that didn't work out? I mean, I, I kind of picture this as they're walking along the road. They're, they're talking about these things. They're talking about all that took place. They're talking about the miracles, the signs, the wonders. They're talking about all the amazing things that Jesus did. They're talking about the cross and how brutal it was and how could they do that to him. But now they're talking about where is he now? He, he said... He was going to do these things. We thought he would redeem Israel. We thought he would restore Israel. And now we're walking away from the place of hope. We're walking away from the place of promise. I can't imagine what they were feeling. I mean, think about it. Think about what they were experiencing. They got to witness the crucifixion of Jesus firsthand. And now they're walking away. And the thing is, they just missed it. Have you ever just missed something? You ever just missed something? I was watching a, a game this week on TV, and I, I looked away just for a second. It was like a last-second buzzer beater, you know? And I looked away. Anybody ever do that before? You, like, look away, and everybody's like, oh! And I was like, what, what happened? DVR. <laughs> but here's the thing. They missed it, and there was no DVR. Like, they, there was no, hey, hey, let's... Let's replay this thing. Let's, let's, let's play it back. Let's see what happened. No, they were just walking away. No DVR, no way to re rewind. And now they are walking away downcast. And here's the thing. They just walked away a little early. Have you ever just walked away just a little early? Have you ever not made it to the church service? And someone was like, man, you missed it. Aren't those the worst? That's the worst words ever. You, you missed it. You had to work. It's not like you didn't want to be here. It's like, man, you missed it. Thank you so much for telling me that. I guess Jesus doesn't love me now, right? It's like, thanks a lot. Really appreciate that. 
They, they just walked away a little early. They just, they just missed it. Have you ever walked away a little early? I know I've walked away a little early at times in my life. Before the fulfillment of something. Before it worked out. Before my hopes had come true. We have a tendency to do that sometimes as human beings. We just walk away a little early. These individuals were walking away from their hope in Christ. And here's the amazing thing. They were walking away from hope, and hope came to walk with them. Wow. They, they were walking away. They, they, they did not stick around. They had to get back. I don't know what they had to get back to or for, but they had to get back for something. They, they were going back to the place I imagine they considered home. Uh, I, I don't know how long they had been with Jesus. From what I understand from the story, it seems as though they had traveled with him at least some. They had traveled with his ministry. They, they, they understood um, what he was there to do. Uh, the story tells me that because, you know, we're going to find later that they actually have a, a relationship with the other disciples. So it just kind of tells me that they, they knew enough to know. They knew enough to know that even Jesus talked about dying and rising again. But they walked away a little early. They lost hope. But here's what I love. Hope found them. And I want to encourage you with that today. Hope can find you. Hope found them, and hope can find you. You know, we, we say, I once was lost, but now I'm found. You, you can't find yourself. Can I tell you that today? You, you can't make it right for you. You can't make all things right and all things new in your life. And you can't give yourself hope. Hope has to find you. And here's the amazing thing about this Emmaus Road is that they were walking away from Jerusalem, away from the things they had hoped for. And hope in the form of a man came and walked with them. Truly, my favorite name of Jesus is Emmanuel. There are many names of Jesus in the New Testament and Old Testament alike, but the, the name Emmanuel, I love it because it, it really means God with us. God with us. And that's what separates Jesus from anything and, and every, everyone else is that he is God who came to be with us. Hope found them. You know, sometimes we lose hope, don't we? Let's just be honest. You ever lose hope? Anybody ever lose hope, ever, ever get forgetful of hope? I have, I'm sure many of you have. Have you ever covered up hope with distraction? I mean, we, we can lose hope in a lot of different ways. Sometimes we just get distracted with the things of this life. I, I think this season that we've been in has been one of a, of a distracting season, and sometimes hope can get covered up, can't it? And sometimes hope can be misplaced and, and misdirected. Let's say it this way. Sometimes our hope can be in the wrong things. Sometimes our hope can be in the temporary and not the eternal. But Jesus came to bring life to us eternally and not simply in a temporary way. They lost hope, but hope found them. I wonder if hope is possibly finding someone today. You didn't plan on it. You just thought you would come. Maybe you haven't been here in a while. Maybe you feel like, man, hope has, has not really been a big part of my life, but hope's finding you today. Can I tell you that God's grace, his mercy is all sufficient. And oftentimes we, we think that we are unworthy, we're unlovable, but yet hope comes to find us. I love this story because they weren't doing anything that really they were supposed to be doing. I mean, weren't they supposed to be at the tomb waiting? Weren't they supposed to stay in Jerusalem? Weren't they supposed to believe what Jesus said? But they're already returning. They're already returning back to their old life, to their old way of life as representation that they were walking away from the life that they had in Christ and walking back to the life that they knew before. But hope found them. But get this, the closest to Jesus still had not seen him, only the empty tomb. Luke 24, 22 through 24 says this, in addition, some of our women amazed us 
They went to the tomb early this morning, but they did not find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our co companions went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see Jesus. And, and this is it's kind of mind-blowing because this is information they know. You'd think they would start to put two and two together. He wasn't there. Dang, let's go home. They, they had this information, but yet still was walking away. But yet we see these people who were closest to Jesus, they were still in Jerusalem, but they had only seen the empty tomb. They stayed in Jerusalem, but, but they did not see Jesus. I want to encourage you today because sometimes, just because you're close to Jesus, doesn't mean you won't find yourself in moments of discouragement and confusion. Just because you love Jesus and just because you've stayed, just because you've stuck in there, it doesn't mean that you won't have moments of confusion and discouragement. Because in this moment, it seems that everybody is a bit confused. Everybody is a bit discouraged. Everybody is, is, is wondering. Everybody is hoping what is going to take place. I'd like to think that sometimes you feel like you're, you're walking on an Emmaus road yourself walking away from the things you hoped for. It didn't work out the way I thought it was going to work out. It often does not. I want to let you know that. If you're, if you're here today and you, and you think it always works out for so-and-so, it, it always works out for them, it seems like. It, it always goes as planned for them. You know, maybe, maybe God has his hand on their life more than someone else. Can I, can I tell you that by, by the scriptures, it doesn't matter how close you are to Jesus, you can still find yourselves in, in moments of confusion. You can still find yourselves in moments of discouragement. And some of you who have followed the Lord long enough, you know that this is true. That you, you sometimes feel like, man, I, I had hoped. Hope is always there though. Sometimes we lose it along the way. They, they lost their hope on the road to Emmaus but hope reminded them. So hope found them, and hope reminded them. Has hope ever reminded you? Believer, has hope ever reminded you? H have you ever received something from the Lord just at the moment that you needed it? Maybe it was through a song on the radio. Maybe it was through a church service. Maybe it was through a, a message or preaching, a teaching. Maybe it was through a, a relationship that you have. Maybe it was a dinner with a friend, and hope reminded you. Luke 24, 25, and 27 says, He said to them, this is Jesus speaking. They, they had not yet understood it or seen him for who he was. He said to them, How foolish you are, how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. Now get this, two seemingly insignificant people walking to an insignificant place, talking to a disguised savior of the world, now reminding them of all that the scripture says. From Moses, the prophets, the law, he, he goes through this. They have seven miles to talk about it. I'm not sure how fast they were walking. I'm sure with their sandals, not real fast. But they had seven miles to discuss the scriptures. And Jesus is unpacking scripture to them. Jesus is revealing scripture to them and encouraging them. What is he doing? He's reminding them. Hope came to remind them of who he was as they were returning to the life that they lived before. Can I tell you, we can't understand the grace and the mercy of God. We, we cannot understand his kindness. We can't understand his forgiveness. Most of us would have said, peace, keep walking. You're going, you're going to leave me? Then go ahead and go on. No, Jesus, for a moment, leaves those who was closest to him to find those who are walking further away from him. This reveals the character. It reveals the nature. It reveals the heartbeat of Jesus Christ. Hope reminded them so that ultimately they would return. 
Luke 24, 28 through 35. Let's read the rest of the story here. It says, as they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus continued on as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening. The day is almost over. So he went home to stay with them. And when they were at the table with him, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to them. And then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him. They recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scripture to us? They got up. Check out what they did. They got up, and they returned at once to Jerusalem. There they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, It is true. So they busted the door. It is true. The Lord has risen and has appeared to Simon. Then the two told what happened on the way and how Jesus was recognized by them when he broke the bread. So now we see these two, again, seemingly insignificant people, go to meet up with the disciples to confirm with each other that he now has risen. The thing that we had hoped for actually happened. The Bible says they got up at once. Hope not only reminded them, but hope restored them. Hope restored them. Can I tell you today that hope can restore you? Hope can restore you? I realize that every Sunday when I get up to speak, I'm I'm speaking to a room full of different people with different situations and different circumstances. I would never try to assume anything, but I would say this, in a room this size with this many people, somebody today needs hope restored. Somebody is hoping reluctantly today, but hope needs to be restored in your life. For some today, maybe you need to be found by hope. You've never even known what hope is. You've never walked with Jesus. You've never understood his grace or his mercy. Can I tell you today that if he found two people that were walking away from the promise, two people that were walking away from their hope, away from their faith, away from their trust in Jesus, and he walks and finds them, he can find you where you are. He reveals to us again the nature of who he is. Hope finds us, hope reminds us, and ultimately hope can restore us. I want to let you know that today. Hope can restore you. We had hoped turned into we have hope. We had hoped turned into we have hope. And here's what I want to encourage somebody with today. The hope that you carry can confirm the hope in somebody else. The hope that you carry within you can confirm the hope in someone else. As they came together, all of their hope began to come alive. And prayerfully today, that's what's taking place. It's a day that we celebrate every year, Easter Sunday, the resurrection. But as our hope comes together, as it comes together, it begins to be confirmed with one another, and our hope is stirred within us. We, every year we do this. Why? I pray that it stirs hope within us so that when we go out from this place, that hope can spread all across our community. Our community needs hope. Our towns need hope. People need hope. The hope you carry can confirm the hope in others. As they shared their hope, it stirred the hope in others. Can I let you know, you need to get your hopes up. You need to get your hopes up. Get your hopes up. I I am at times known as an optimist in many situations, especially when I tend to work on things myself and break more things that was broke in the first place. I still think that YouTube can fix it somehow. Anybody feel what I'm saying? DIYers in this house. I, I always get my hopes up with things, and sometimes my hopes get a little bit let down. But can I tell you that when it comes to our faith in Jesus Christ, we always need to live with our hopes up. We always need to get our hopes up. We always need to keep our hopes up. Amen? We need to keep our hopes up because if the church doesn't have hope, then the world doesn't have hope. If the church doesn't have hope, the world doesn't have hope. If we don't, if we don't show forth our hope in Jesus Christ in this world, who will show hope? Hope was revealed in and through Jesus Christ. 
Hope was revealed in and through Jesus Christ. I just want to say it this way this morning. Jesus is hope. If you're looking for hope, it's only found in Jesus. If you need reminded today of what hope is, it's Jesus. If you feel like you need found today, can I tell you, it's Jesus. If you need restored today, can I tell you, it's Jesus. Jesus is hope. So just like this road, I wonder what road you might be on today. All of us are on a road. This, this road to Emmaus, an insignificant place. Can I tell you that God can put you on a road to a significant place, to a glorious place, to a hope-filled place. And if you think there's shouting in this church and excitement in this church, it, it ain't nothing like heaven. It ain't, no, it ain't nothing like it's gonna be when we see Jesus face to face. And some of these things I, I, I can't give you, and I understand that. I can simply tell you about what the Word of God says. I can simply tell you about my experience with Jesus Christ, but I can't make anything happen for anybody. That's where faith comes in. Faith that Jesus Christ is who He says He is that he did all that he said he would do. I don't know what road you're on. Maybe you're confused, maybe you're complacent. Maybe you're tired, maybe you're worried. Maybe you're weary about things in life. Can I tell you that hope can find you? Hope can remind you. <laughs> hope can restore you. Jesus, again, it's, it's moments after the resurrection and he shows up on this road and walks seven miles going to an insignificant place with insignificant people. If he did that for them, he'll do it for you. He just wanted to show you in that story, it don't matter who you are, it don't matter where you're from, hope can find you, hope can remind you, hope can restore you. Let hope find you today. Let hope remind you today. Let hope restore you today. Jesus Christ is hope. Do you believe that this morning in this place? Jesus Christ is hope. Would you stand on your feet with me in this place? I love this story. And you know, on Easter, you, as someone who, who speaks God's word, it's like, man, it's Easter. I, I know that the place is gonna be packed and you wanna, you wanna share something of significant value. But this story, I just felt like it had to be shared today. Two insignificant people walking to an insignificant place, hope shows up. Prayerfully today, something about the character, the nature and the heart of Jesus Christ has been revealed to us. Why did he came? Why, why did he come? He, he, he came to save that which was lost. He came to remind us of his love, of his grace, of his mercy. He came to restore humanity. And today he wants to do those very same things in your life. I believe that because the Bible says so. It's not by my authority, but it is by the authority of the word of God. If you're here today, you don't know Jesus, let hope find you. That's all I gotta say, let hope find you. Surrender to Jesus, your life to him. Return to a place of hope. If your hope's been covered up by stuff the past year and a half or so in your life, man, let hope remind you. Let hope remind you of who he is. If you came in broken today, let hope restore you. Let hope restore you to the person that God has created you to be. Jesus Christ is hope. I just wanna pray a prayer here in a moment and give an opportunity for anyone that does not know Jesus Christ to know Jesus Christ. And this is an entryway into faith, into Christianity. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord, you will be saved. You say, well, that don't make a whole lot of sense. That's how crazy his grace is. If you simply surrender yourself to him, he will save you, cleanse you, 
you are born again, as the Bible says. You are made new. Why? Because it's not based upon your works. It's based upon the work he did for you. Not your, not your deeds, but everything Jesus did for you on the cross and through the resurrection. Would you pray with me today? Church, help me pray. If you're here, you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. Invite him into your heart, into your life today. Say, Lord Jesus, I know that I need you. I know you came for me. You died on a cross and you rose again. I put my faith in you. I put my trust in you. All my hope is in you. Lead me, guide me, and direct me. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Can we put our hands together for possibly someone that prayed that prayer today, whether here, whether online? Listen, it's the greatest decision that you'll ever make, but it's not the last decision you'll ever make. Continue to put one foot in front of the other in your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing. Sometimes we do that differently. Sometimes we ask people to raise their hands. Here's the, here's the thing, it's not the way we do it. It's not the way we do it. That's not what saves anyone. Jesus Christ is the only one who saves. But this is just a moment, an opportunity to allow people to put their trust and hope in Jesus. If you prayed that prayer today, make sure you let someone know about it. Make sure you contact us at the church. Make sure you let someone know here in this place before you even leave today. Let them know, I prayed and received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. At the church, we have a team here called the Fresh Start Team. They're always located up here, my left, your right. If you still have questions, you still might wanna pray with someone, they're here to pray with you. They're here to talk with you. They're here to share with you. Even if you wanna tell them, hey, I invited Christ to be a part of my life today, just make sure you let someone know because it's the greatest decision that you will ever make. Can we put our hands together one more time for hope? Jesus Christ, he's good. Come on, he's worthy. He's faithful. We give him praise, we give him honor. We give him glory. Let me pray a prayer blessing for you. Father, we thank you so much for your people. Thank you so much for each and every one that's come and gathered together in this house today. I pray blessing upon them, Lord God. I pray you bless them, keep them. May your face shine upon them. Be gracious unto them, Lord God, and give them peace. May they walk and be the light in this world. May they be the hope of the earth because you are in them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.